Here's a quick video to show you how to create a raft in Bob.ai. Uh, first thing you want to do once you log in is to click on the Manage Rafta app. Then on the top right hand corner, you want to go to Create Rafta. Here you want to enter the name of the housing authority you're working with. And then you want to enter the first and last name of the client that you're working with. So this is all fake names and data. Um, so I will enter the client's email address as well. And you can see now uh, it went from gray to purple, which means I can click to create that. Once you have that, it's going to ask to confirm that this is the housing authority you're working with. Um, please pay attention to that very carefully and then click yes. And then here you can enter the run amount, select the number of bedrooms. If you allow pets, uh, you can click on yes here and enter the pet deposit amount. Um, if you charge a monthly run amount, so say $25 per month, you can also enter that here. Um, if you have a weight restriction, uh, you can enter that, Let's say no more than 100 pounds. And if you also have a breed restriction, you could say um, no aggressive breeds. Um, and then here, if you need two references or not, you can click yes or no. Um, and if you need the FICO score, you can also click yes or no. Um, and here, the, your user type is an agent. You will need to enter the management agreement in the additional documents. Otherwise, you could just choose owner here. Uh, and then um, you can go ahead and enter the property address. So for this one, I'll use 3950 North Story Road. Um, and as you can see, when I start typing, it's going to give me a Google verified address here. So you want to make sure that you're choosing one of these addresses so it's already verified in the system. So once you select it from the this drop down, once you start entering it, all the information will be entered for you. And then you just want to click on continue with utilities and appliances. If this is not clickable, that means you may have missed something up here that is a requirement. So anything with the red asterisk is a requirement. So make sure you go back and double check that you're not missing anything in red uh, and then this button should now be clickable. So now to take me to the utilities and appliances. Um, in this structure type, uh, please make sure that if it's an apartment, condo, or townhouse that you're selecting this apartment, condo, townhouse from the drop down. Um, in this case, uh, it is not, so I'll keep it as a single family duplex. Um, this is defaulted, um, so you want to make sure that you're updating this to make sure that it's the correct utilities. So here, um, everything on the left hand side is for the owner. If the owner pays for it, you want to select the purple button, the purple radio button. If this utility, like heating, is paid for by the tenant, you want to select the column on the right. So in this instance, um, the tenant pays for the heating, cooking, water heating, uh, but the owner pays for the water, sewer, and trash collection. So you can see that here. And then the appliance is provided by so this subsidy is given if the appliances are provided by the tenant and if not um, and it's provided by the owner then you don't get the utility allowance for that one um, so then you would just click next here okay so once this is clicked uh, it'll say this unit information is being updated um, this is the rent responsibility form it also lets you know that there are six additional documents that need to be filled out um, before you complete it. So I'll just click got it here. 
Um, and then this document just acknowledges that I'm not related by blood or marriage to the client shown here. Um, so if I'm okay with that, I click on the purple button for sign here. Now this asks me if I'm okay with the applying an electronic signature. So I just click yes here and then confirm. This just lets me know that the form is ready for signature. Um, and once you sign, the form will be locked. Um, and if you have to make any edits, you have to click on the unlock button at the top right. So here, if I need to invite a signer, invite a reviewer, um, or change the name, if my name is not Sue Susie, for example, I could change my name under my account here. Um, since this is correct for me, I'll click got it. Scroll down, then click save. Um, so then I um, have my address, the year the unit was built, um, and the square footage. So here I'll click on the number of bathrooms we have. So there's uh, one full bathroom. So just make sure that you go through this. Um, this is actually related to the rent reasonableness determination for the number um, of amenities that are provided in the unit. Um, so you want to make sure that you're going through here and making sure that everything um, it, that you have provided for the unit is selected. So here for the smoke detector and carbon monoxide, it's going to ask you for how many. Um, these have been recently updated. Um, so you just double want to want to make sure that you have a smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector in the unit. Um, it will fail inspection if that's not included. So please make sure that this is in your unit before you lease it out. Um, and then here for the signature, once I'm done filling that out, I can click on sign here, click on yes, and confirm. Click OK, got it, and then save. All right, so now I get the success message. This is my vendor number verification form. I've already filled this form out before, so it just stays in my um, landlord profile. Um, so if you enter anything for the agent here, you will be required to enter the agent agreement um, and upload it in the additional documents tab. Um, if this is clicked yes, then you will have to upload it here. Similarly, if the HAP payments will be made um, to the agent, you will also need to enter and upload uh, the additional documents, the, ma and the management agreement under the additional documents tab. So my bank information is already there. You can see that this is a fake bank account as well. Um, and this is already signed from a previous raft I have created. And then I'll go to the next one. So this is the direct deposit form. This has already been filled out as well. Some PHAs will require a handwritten signature. Others will have the sign here button. Um, so if it is a handwritten, you just want to click on the next tab for additional documents and upload the document here. Um, so I already have other documents listed. So I'll just go here and click on direct deposit form. So again, that's here are my upload instructions. Um, and here I'll need the direct deposit form. So you want to make sure you choose the correct document um, under direct deposit form here. Here I'll choose the file. So I'll choose the file from my computer. Here's my direct deposit form. And then attach that. I verify that this is the correct form that's attached and click start uploading. Now we can see here that the file was uploaded successfully and now the document's right here. So then I'll click next. So this information is already filled out, um, but if the request at least start date is 1230, this could also be changed to January 1st if that's what I'd like. Um, and then here you could choose your uh, security deposit. And this is the date the unit's available for inspection. So if I select the 15th here, an inspector will not be scheduled to go to this unit until at least the 15th. Um, so today uh, I'm recording this video on December 8th. 
Um, if this is ready to go now, I'll go ahead and choose that date here. So this structure type, I want to make sure the structure type matches the utilities that I entered previously. So that was a single family detached home. So I'll keep that selected here. Um, if any of these utilities are incorrect, you will have to go back to your unit here to update them. These look good to me. Um, so I'll go ahead and click and continue here. If you have more than four units in your apartment complex or multi, uh, multifamily property, um, that will be found in the um, additional amenities. So make sure that you go back in and you would be required to fill in the number, uh, at least three unassisted units, the address and unit number and the date it was rented out along with the rental amount. Um, so again, this is, if you are an owner of a project with more than four units, so this right here, um, you will be required to enter the comps for three unassisted units within the premises. Okay. Um, and here for the lead based paint, if the unit's built after 1978, you can select the first one. Otherwise, you would want to com um, complete it, uh, the statement here, check one of these, and uh, upload the lead based paint disclosure. And then from here, um, you would enter your business address and phone number, and then click on the purple sign here button. All right, so click on yes and then confirm. Now that the form is ready for signature, I click OK. Got it. And now I'll just click on the green Submit Rafta package. So this Rafta will automatically be sent to Jennifer Sean. So that email address I entered in the very beginning, jennifershawn at mail.com will automatically get it. If Jennifer is working with um, a granddaughter or a son that can help her fill it out, uh, you can also enter their information here and then click OK. And here um, is the confirmation that my RACTA is complete um, and it's being sent to the renter for signature. Um, so I can close out of this. Once the initial inspection is scheduled, uh, I will get that information here. And then the HAP contract, it depends on which housing authority you're working with, um, but oftentimes this is also done offline. Um, in the future, they will be using the HAP contract from here um, where they can uh, go into this date um, and fill this out. So if you only see this um, as part of you know, the pre-filled out information, um, you wanna wait until you receive the actual um, approved copy from the, land, from the PHA. So in here, if there are no household members, that's a, a good key to let you know that this isn't filled out yet by the PHA. Um, so when I go back to my Manage RAFTA, I can filter um, for the client's name again. And I'll see here that the status is in sent to client status. Now the client will go in, log into their account, Make sure that they're using the same um, email address that's listed here. So in this voucher information, they'll have to log in using this email here. So it's, it's under this voucher information. If they're using a different email to log in, they will not see that RAFTA. So the PHA or their um, COC or the Housing Navigator organization will have to go in and update this for them. They can also contact us by submitting a ticket and support as well. And so here it's in sent to client status. Uh, you should receive an email that um, the RFT has been submitted and is in sent to client status. Once it's approved, you will also get um, an email message that the RFT has been approved and the inspection has been scheduled. Thank you.